Volta, Madri. I can only hope that this video will be received like this. <laughs> as opposed to this. But I'm about to find out, haven't I? It's only been in the last couple of years where I re-realized something. I think I might actually have xenophobia. Successfully diagnosed by... Minton. I should make it clear that while my stance is not going to be popular with people, dog lovers especially, yeah, that's it. I thought I had something grander to say to go with that. But what I can talk about is how grander my bowels feel whenever I'm around these four-legged plebs. Five, six, one of the two years old I was when I was being walked home by a sitter, minder, whatever you call them. We were a few doors away from the house, but then we came across an obstacle within the footpath. And this is where it all started. And I swear on the almighty sandals of Nicholas that this is where this fear originated. It wasn't a Siberian Husky. It wasn't a Bulldog. It wasn't a German Shepherd, a Pug, or a Poodle. Of course it was a Labrador. <laughs> what do you take me for? The seemingly most adorable looking breed of dog is also the same one that clearly had a human hand in mind for Umlone. My human hand. As opposed to what? My animal hand? What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> I didn't know Doggo's name, so for the sake of this story, I will aptly address them as Bastard. So, Bastard was asleep. My five to six year old curiosity wanted to see if Bastard was awake. So I leaned in closer to Bastard. Next thing I noticed, this little carrier of heinous dump gave my tiny, teeny, weeny self that absolute banger of a side eye. Before I knew I could multiply by 13, it went from fetal to fucking feral. My entire hand was in Bastard's mouth for a solid second. Sensory overload. Very, very real for us autistic people. And oh boy, I felt a lot of things then. The only good thing I felt was the relief that I was distancing myself from Bastard. Throughout my life, I repeatedly found myself in situations and environments where people just could not get enough of dogs. Either that or they just didn't mind them. Through the most benevolent of intentions, I felt like my experience was being conditioned out of me. Nobody accused me of being crazy or anything, but that led to something worse. I started to think I was going crazy. Yeah, but I knew. Yes, I go my going e. Two years ago is where everything came to a head. So in a horrifically rare instance where I went for a late night run, I stress horrifically rare considering that I haven't done it since. I was in the final stretch. I cut through an entire area of green that had like a straight concrete path going through it. No street lights were on, bar the ones that were on the other side of this entire area, often in the distance. But for all I know, I could have stepped in mick muck, but alas, I proceeded. I proceeded, but then very quickly began to slow down because I heard a noise. Something was running. So then it was a matter of casting bell. And I locked eyes with something. It was a shape of sorts, but fully in motion. But I couldn't make it out. It was dark. I didn't know what the hell was going on. At this point, I am now on the other side of this entire green area. So with a little bit of light, it was now illuminating this side. And I saw it. The shape in question was my nightmare. Ipkis, police! Freeze! Greyhound. I can't begin to express how discombobulatingly full the inside of my ass felt when I saw this demon. But why a greyhound, Sean? You're probably asking. Why them specifically? Have you ever looked at the head of a greyhound and mistook it for a knife? That very night when I ended up on Pelvic Splooge Avenue, when I saw this absolute lank doodle coming towards me, I thought a Silent Hill monster was chasing me. I thought I created my own Silent Hill monster. A sausage with legs and a knife for a head. I put my hands out and I was like, ay, 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 which stopped it dead in its tracks. Luckily, the owner was there and I told them, I said, I am scared of dogs. Thankfully, they were understanding about it, which was cool. What the hell were they doing out in the dark though? Playing catch? You will end up face down in a thorn bush before you have any luck making contact with El Hound Sack here. I've got questions that I know are never going to be answered. I'm okay with that. You know what makes me uncomfortable with dog owners? When they try to reassure you 
when they're all like, ah, stop, they're not going to bite you. I don't know you or your dog. I don't know what's going to happen here and now, other than the fact that I want to make like Barry Allen and speed right the fuck out of there. Again, I acknowledge the benevolent intentions, but just because you say something that sounds good, you don't know if that's any good for me. You don't know me. I don't know you. For all I know, your madra could be sizing my legs up for chicken wings. Brief detour. Has anybody ever done the Superman with a groin guard on? I felt like I was getting blown by a piranha. Literally last week at the time of recording this, I was on my way back from my local Tesco where I had secured some chicken. And right before I get home, I have to cut through another big area of green with a straight path. It's halfway down the green, but in the distance, I noticed that there was a man walking two dogs. Two red flags were actively being waved at me here. The distance between the owner and one of the dogs was too great. And I thought to myself, that's not on a leash. What's going on here? But the closer I got, the more I noticed that it was on a leash. Just an invisible long one. This dog out front, however, this little mongrel locked eyes with me as if it was love at first sight. Which, let's be clear, I am a smoke show. In the sense that I was about to combust into flames when it was making its way towards me. I walked off to the side, getting onto the green, creating as much space between me and Dogzilla over here as much as I could. But then, it started barking. Three barks later, it growled. At this point, I am nervous, knowing full well that this little shit was on a leash, I was still thinking. Again, credit where credit is due. I told the dog owner about my fear of dogs and he was cool about it. But uh, Maleshkale, doggo, friggin' bully bulldog. What the hell was that growling for? I was minding my business. I couldn't have been happier to serve you my absence. Please, don't get me started on the tongues of those German shepherds. I'm scared of dogs. That's something that's never going to change. Why do I believe dogs suck? Is because they have teeth and they made their mark. Like I have fears that I'm actually interested in conquering. This ain't one of them. In the end, I always go back to that quote from the Lost World Jurassic Park and how much it resonates with me in relation to everything I've just spoken about. These creatures require our absence to survive, not our help. Not at all am I advocating for any abuse against them. I just want to avoid them. If other people want pets, be it a dog, a cat, or an eel, you do you, but I don't. Like I said earlier, I'm completely content in serving them my absence rather than my company. And again, credit where credit is due, I've never met a dog owner that has been an absolute gommel. Yet, Mila Buekas Rini Ushla, Slan Live.